What's up everyone, it's your boy Ren here. In today's episode, I'll be modifying my Razer Death Adder Elite with a custom Paraflex Paracord, and I'll also be replacing the stock mouse gates with hyperglides. And as a bonus, I'll be comparing hyperglides to an Amazon alternative I found, and spoiler, the Amazon skates actually provide us something that hyperglides do not. So definitely stay tuned for that. Now for the paracord and hyperglide installation, I'll be providing step-by-step -step instructions and also some before and after comparison clips at the conclusion of the video. So with that said, let's get started. For our paracord installation, here are the things you'll need. Alright, so I listed all three screwdriver sizes that I needed to install the paracord, but basically you'll just need one flathead to pry off the mouse gates and two different size Phillip head screwdrivers to remove the different size screws on the PCB and the case itself. Alright, now you won't need an entire spudger set, but I do highly recommend a pry tool just to assist you with removing cables and the little small wires inside the mouse, the little clips and such. Alright, last but not least, you will definitely need a lighter or some sort of heat gun just to activate the heat shrink wrapping on the mouse cable. Alright, now step one, you will use a small flathead screwdriver to remove the stock mouse gates. Now I use a size 332, um, but you won't necessarily need to use something like that. Uh, you can just use something flat enough and skinny enough just to get under the mouse gate to remove as much adhesive as possible all at once because that is the number one main goal. You just want to remove as much adhesive uh, without damaging the mouse. and. Uh, yeah, size 332 for me is uh, just perfect. That's the screwdriver I'm using right here, right now. Alright, so you can see here that I removed as much adhesive as possible, um, but yeah, just try to do your best. It's not going to be perfect, um, but what you'll have to do is just end up cleaning all of that off uh, down the road when we are ready to install the hyperglides, and I will show you how to do that as well. Okay, step two, you will use a size zero Phillip head screwdriver to unscrew the mouse case, and remember the third and final screw is under the sticker. All right, now once all three screws are removed, the top casing will clip undone with very light pressure. Um, but remember the third screw that is under the sticker, I, I wasn't actually able to remove it out of the case itself and it doesn't look like you'll actually have to either. So just remember that, just all you have to do is once you pop the hole in the sticker itself, just remove the screw until it unscrews as far as it can go and that should be it. The top will then pop off very lightly uh, with very little pressure. Um, so remember to not clip it off and go crazy using as much strength as possible because the wires under there are attached and you can very easily break them and rip them if you try to just manhandle the top off. Um, so just be very careful with this entire process and remember to uh, just be very, very light and go through every step carefully.
All right, step three. Now this step, you will be removing three internal cable clips. Now two points will detach the top and one point will detach the bottom. Now during this step, I do suggest that you use a pry tool um, just because these switches are really, really small. And unless you have fingernails or really, really tiny hands or fingers, it's gonna be really difficult to um, un attach these, you know, just confidently. So I do recommend using a pry tool like I did. Now step four, you will use a size PH0 screwdriver to remove five screws that fasten the PCB onto the bottom half of the mouse. Now note you will need a size PH00 screwdriver to remove the smaller sized mouse wheel screw.
All right, step five, you will test fit the paracord cable using the original cable to determine the spacing and the slack needed for installing the paracord correctly. Now what I used was just basically lining it up um, so I can see where the heat shrink should be and also where they placed the stopper, how much cable they left exposed, and basically trying to mimic their cable with my paracord as much as possible because that is the main key here you just want to have a really really easy smooth transition uh, without seeing or trying to modify anything out of the ordinary because all we're doing is replacing the cable Now step six, you will use a lighter or a heat pen to activate the heat shrink um, and be sure to rotate the cable to heat evenly and also try to avoid direct flame on the cord as much as possible um, because you can see like mine, I actually left it on just a split second too long and it did end up uh, darkening the paracord cable outside just a tad little bit. I mean, it didn't affect it at all. Um, it's completely aesthetic and it's also just the part that's going to be inside the mouse so nobody will actually see that um, but I just wanted to make a note of that because um, be very very careful because it's very sensitive but also don't um, completely freak out if you do see a, a small scuff or burn mark on it uh, that's not a problem at all but just again you don't want to melt anything and you don't want to uh, completely have direct flame on the cord itself um, but just do your best again just be quick and uh, as uh, aware of what's going on as possible and just if you need to just go really really slow and step by step um, down the heat shrink if you need
Now step seven, you will fit your brand new paracord cable into the mouse and plug it back into the mouse PCB. All right, now step eight, you are going to reclip the top and bottom cables to the PCB and reattach the five PCB screws that we removed earlier. So basically just four PCB screws and one mouse wheel screw. Okay, step nine, we are going to reinstall the top shell of the mouse to the bottom. So now we are just gonna screw in the top two screws and the bottom screw should still be in the sticker. Um, so that will be it.
All right, now the last and final step is just to plug in your mouse and just test it. Just This is the moment of truth. Just hopefully you didn't damage anything and you can plug it in and see your RGB light up and all your buttons work and you can go from there. All right, now if you aren't familiar with hyperglides, they are pretty much the industry standard when it comes to mouse gates and have been for quite some time now. They make custom mouse gates for almost every mouse model available, so I either recommend paraflex.com for hyperglides or going directly to hyperglide.net to pick up a pair. All right, now as a bonus, I was able to go on Amazon and pick up these mouse gates here. Uh, they're made by a company called Hotline Games and they are very, very, uh, let's just say cost effective because they're less than ten dollars uh, amazon prime and uh, you can get these bad boys yourself okay now starting off with the hyperglides now up just a few details while i unbox it hyperglide skates are made from 100 percent virgin grade ptfe and it delivers a premium glide across any surface um, now there are many different grades of PTFE and virgin grade is the highest quality and purest form. Uh, and now both of these skates are actually made with PTFE except these ones are the 100% virgin grade and the Hotline Game skates are actually silver treated PTFE Teflon. Now uh, that's really cool to know I guess. Um, these Hyperglide skates are at least um, 0 0.50 uh, millimeters thick while the hotline game skates are 0.6 millimeters thick so you'll notice that difference definitely when i uh, show the comparison of both but now you can see here you now it's just a really nice pure white mouse skate and um right off the bat these things are really really smooth and uh, i mean not greasy smooth but it's like the only comparison that i can have to it is pretty much like a a really really nice detailed car when you glide your fingers across it it's just a really nice smooth feeling um, these ones almost have something like that um, it's not a hard plastic weird smooth feeling like any other mouth skate um, these ones really really have its own signature uh, feeling okay now moving on to the hotline game skates aka the Amazon Prime skates now opening up they give you a little manual just with stuff uh, other products that they offer um, very interesting here now they also give us uh, well of course course two sets of mouse skates but right off the bat you can see here they give us a middle mouse skate for our death adder elite which the hyperglides do not now a size comparison between the Hyperglides and the Hotline Game Skates. It's uh, pretty much evenly cut. So it passes that test. They use a 3M adhesive. And again, this is a silver treated PTFE Teflon. Now they do give us uh, some extra stuff that, again, Hyperglides do not. They give us some alcohol uh, wipes as well as, uh, you know, just a little cloth napkin, so to speak, as well. Um, but they also just give us the middle mouse skate, which is a huge, huge deal. I mean, it, it just shows us that, one, they have the capability to do it, so why isn't Hyperglides, you know, giving us something like that, which I'm not complaining, because Hyperglides are awesome, but, uh, yeah, that middle mouse skate is something to take note of. Now, immediately right off the bat, you can see how thin these are. And the feeling of this just feels, uh, it's just not even a comparison. Just like the color, it's a night and day difference. It's uh, It really is. 
Now this you can see here, it actually just has a reflective plastic color, like almost like the stock skates did. And uh, hyperglides don't have that. I mean, obviously it's because they're they're white, but uh, but still, even if they were a uh, lower grade plastic, um, they would still be semi-reflective, just like the Hotline Game skates. All right, now moving on to a quick sound comparison. Now time to get these babies prepped, cleaned, and installed. Okay, so you can see here that I was able to use the alcohol wipe and also the flathead screwdriver to just scrape off any excess remaining um, just sticky stuff from uh, or adhesive from the last mouse skate and uh, that alcohol wipe really helped. Now I'm using the uh, little cloth wipe that I was given by the Hotline Games mouse skates uh, just to dry everything off just to make sure that there's no alcohol remaining, nothing on my fingertips because I am peeling these mouse skates off which you will now see here. It's just perfectly dry and now it's ready for the hyperglides. All right, now you can see here, it doesn't have to be perfect. You just have to make sure it lines up, uh, make sure it just fits in the space. Basically, that's designated for the mouse skate, and that's pretty much it. Uh, just make sure that, again, the surface is clean before you place the adhesive on it, and you are good to go. Okay, yeah, it's not even a comparison, guys. These uh, hyperglides are the truth. Now, it's easy for someone to think that mouse skates can't impact performance, but until you try hyperglides, <laughs> it's noticeably different compared to anything else I've tried. There is little to no drag or resistance from the bottom of the mouse, even placing pressure on either side of the mouse. Now, look at the thickness of the mouse skate compared to the stock mouse skate on the middle because I did leave that on and now I am going to install the uh, Hotline Games middle mouse skate.
All right, now just like the hyperglides, just make sure that the surface is clean of all the adhesive and um, just make sure that it is dry as well. So you can use the alcohol wipe and the little cloth as well. Um, you can also put your finger directly on this adhesive because they aren't as expensive as the hyperglides. Um, so yeah, just make sure it lines up correctly and uh, we can definitely see what it looks like in comparison to the hyperglides. All right now here is a quick thickness comparison between both the hyperglides and the center hotline games mouse skate now right off the bat i noticed there is little to no drag or resistance from the bottom of the mouse even when placing more pressure on either side of the mouse when it used to just, you can feel the drag or resistance with the older mouse gates. Now hyperglides compared to hotline games, yeah, just just choose hyperglides. Even though they give you the cool little cloth wipe and the alcohol wipes, no, no, just, just put those away and save your money and just get some hyperglides if you can get them. All right, now moving on to comparison footage of before and after.
All right, now in conclusion, are hyperglides worth it? Yes. Is a paracord worth it? Most definitely. I highly recommend both of these modifications. Now, if you have the option to pick up hyperglides, definitely go for it. If you have the option to pick up a paracord, definitely do it because now you can see the benefits of both and you know how to install them. All right, so that's it. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Please like and subscribe to support the channel and I'll see you next time.